You're now listening to the Wandering Buffalo podcast with your hosts, Andrew Chang and Justin Goddard. Hello and welcome to the Wandering Buffalo podcast. My name is Andrew Chang and alongside me is my co-host, Justin Goddard. Tonight, we're going to talk about the most impactful wins and losses as it relates to us as fans. For the record, we're going to keep this fairly recent, so we're not going to be talking about the Jim Kelly football eras and the four Super Bowl losses, nothing like that. Um, personally, because I've never seen it, right? <laughs> so I can't really speak to it. Uh, as always, you can find us on social media, podcasting platforms, and even on YouTube by searching The Wandering Buffalo Podcast. I'm super, super excited for tonight's episode, Justin. We have some fun guests lined up for for every all of our listeners really but first justin i know you just got out of work you were slam packed how are you doing how are you doing uh i'm just glad i made it here man yeah it was a real heck of a day but uh you know jump from jump from point a to point b and here we are how you doing tonight i'm doing pretty good i just uh finished up with dinner with my mom brother aunt uncle and their two kids and it, I thought it was going to be a lot worse than Squad what it really deep. was. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. All right, so let's talk about some Bills-related news before we get to the meat and potatoes of today's episode. The real Bills-related news is that the Carolina Panthers have hired Bills player of personnel Dan Morgan to be their assistant GM. And if you don't know who that is, all right, that's fair. You, Us as fans, we know the players more than the front office, but I always see that people are replying like, who, like, as in, like, who's that? Why does it matter? But I think people should be asking, why? Like, why did the Panthers want him? Right? Because the Bills are a well-respected organization, and when you have the clout, people want a piece of it. They see what the Bills are doing, they see the success, they want it. It's a copycat league. I wouldn't be surprised if this is the first of many exodus for the front offices. Look at the Eagles, Seahawks, Patriots. Teams have been poking away, or I'm sorry, taking away people from their front office, their coaching staff, all the time. Like, what is life, Justin? Yeah, so... You know, I agree with you. I don't think this is going to be, you know, the only personnel that we lose. Um, You know, when you're having, when you're running a successful organization, people are going to want to take, you know, the pieces that helped you get there. Um, So, yeah, it sucks losing Dan Morgan, but, you know, it's good for him getting, getting a promotion with another organization. Not surprised at all that it's, you know, going back to the Panthers obviously has ties there. Um, But I, in an off season where we didn't lose Dable, we didn't lose Frazier, um, mm-hmm. you know, jo- Joe Shane's probably the next one to go, but that's kind of expected when you start having the success, you got to kind of not only build and maintain the roster, but you're going to have to replace those front office pieces as you go as well. Yeah. It's very, very weird to be in yeah, that position. Normal. It's like, wait, you guys want, you guys want someone of ours? Yeah, like, what like you... previous front office people we had when we're done with them, they, you never see them in the league again. Yeah, definitely <laughs> not. Well, other than that, it's been a pretty slow news week, so I think that's going to wrap it up for this news week's update. So let's dive into the most impactful wins and losses for the Buffalo Bills as it pertains to us as fans. But we might need a little help here, Justin. So we have some uh, new friends that can do just that. Please welcome in the host of the Not Your Average podcast in the 716, Mike and T. Mike, T, how we doing tonight? Ah, good, good, good. How you doing? What's up? We're doing great. We are good. T- tell us a little about, about yourselves, where you're from, how you guys got into podcasting, a little bit about your podcast in general. T, go ahead, Mike. You, you can start. You no, want to go, ahead? go ahead, Mike. Okay. Yes. Um, well, we're from Buffalo. So 716 right here, uh, Buffalo Town, um, Buffalo Bills fans since babies. Um, Mm -hmm. Me and T actually met through uh, I Cut Her Son's Hair. So 
Oh, okay. She had the podcast going for a while. She'll tell you more about that. And um, she asked me to to see if I wanted to hop on and join. And I was like, that'll be dope. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> uh, we started it, and I feel like our chemistry is really good. We've been having a good time, some good responses. And, uh, you know, we talk about Bill stuff, um, news, music, stuff like that. And we just try to, you know, keep it raw and uncut. But you know, uh, also bring you know accurate news. Mm-hmm. Yeah, go ahead, T. Take it away. I mean, basically, you said it all. I mean, <laughs> we are we're Bills fans, but we we're not serious about analytics and you know no. all of that other stuff. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of podcasts out there that can give you that, and we just we're not. We like to joke. You know, we mm-hmm. have fun with it. Yeah. We have segments on there. It's like, are you serious and stuff like that? So we're, you know, we're just fans that have a yeah. podcast. Yeah, and I'll, I'll say, uh, listening to some of your work, I kind of like that that vibe. You guys kind of had the the same type of vibe as us. You know, it's it's yeah. not all X's and O. It's it's kind of like gut reactions and how you feel as a fan. You know, you can yes. you can dive deeper into it, and I'm sure we all have the ability to do a bit of that, but. Mm-hmm. We kind of wanted the feel of our podcast to be, you know, a bunch of friends in the garage having Absolutely. some beers and yes. you yes. start talking football and mm-hmm. see where it takes you. Yeah, because yeah. that's really yeah. what it is. And that's what people yeah. want to hear. They want to hear, you know, from other fans. And, you know, that's just where we come from. That's where we speak mm-hmm. from. So, you know what I mean? Like we uh, keep up with the news as much as anybody else. So we just kind of bring it to it from our perspective, you know, and have fun with it. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> and sometimes we go left. So much Mike, but not me. Sorry. <laughs> it's hey, me. You, get, you need a little left field action, right? <laughs> Absolutely. You do. You do. Mike's the tangent guy. Right. Yeah, I, I say stuff that people um, think but don't want to say. So that's good. <laughs> Right. Yes. And just, yes. Uh, I guess, just to kind of echo what Justin said before, I had listened to, uh, I believe, episode one ten of your podcast, mm-hmm. the one where you guys were talking about, you know, the late DMX, and I had listened to it all the way through as I was flying to New York City, and I was like, I like this vibe. It just feels, you know. It just feels like I'm I'm with you guys having this conversation, even though I'm not saying nothing. But it, yeah, it was right. just really easy to digest. So I really appreciate that um, that aspect of your podcast. And it's very. It almost sounds like it. Correct me if I'm wrong here, Justin. That both of us have the same competitive edge as we're just trying to be relaxed just talk football, yes. but not be like crazy in your face. Like, oh, you don't know what this means, like. Yeah, you know? no, no. Yeah, <laughs> That's not what we're sure. about. Yeah. But, nah, absolutely. Yeah, but I definitely, I, I I, think I can speak for Justin and I and Jake, our executive producer, when we say we appreciated uh, the nature of your podcast. So we really Thank enjoyed you. it. Awesome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate Thank it. You. Absolutely. Thank you guys for having so, us on, too. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. So, I have a question. So how did the race go? You guys did a race or something like that, oh, or no? You... I don't want to talk about the race. <laughs> the combine, the combine. Okay, my oh. bad. Okay, we can forget about it then. <laughs> nah, nah, we. Nah, I I ran a I ran a six one four forty. So you know, I kind of doubled down on the podcast because my dreams of being in the NFL were crushed that day. <laughs> but but that's kind of to the aspect of what we were talking about with our podcast is you know we don't take ourselves too seriously. We right. know we're not you know as we're judging these four six athletes and saying he runs a little slow we kind of wanted to put the context out there of like we know we can't go catch that ball but we can still have the expectations of the pros to do it so i right. loved it i loved it sure. yeah, it I was it. i was i was waiting for the whole thing i was like i can't wait and i was seeing it i was like this is awesome <laughs> thank you yeah, yeah i was sore for weeks <laughs> i i thought i would have performed a little better just because I guess in in high school I just did track and I thought you know maybe I, I I'm not slow but then I then when we like tabulated the scores and I saw that I ran like a five ten I was like dang that ain't nothing <laughs> yeah, like yeah, Michael, can beat you. <laughs> yeah like literally it was bad I was like 
I gotta reevaluate my my outlook on right? the term. Because Mike Vick is out here doing a four seven, right? Yeah, at yeah. his age, incredible. Yeah, that's crazy. Forty. Yeah. 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 Well, I guess uh, now is a good time as ever. I mean, we we definitely took the L's on that, but let's talk about some W's, specifically some most okay. the most impactful wins that we as Bills fans have personally uh, experienced. So, you know, I'll, I'll let you guys go first. Okay. Uh, I would think as far as the biggest wins, I, I wouldn't go, like, for it, for any certain game. I would actually, when we got digs, that was a Ooh. huge win, you know, because when you have a situation where you're playing somewhere that you don't particularly like, all you're doing is you're so eager to go to somewhere else, uh, another establishment, when they will res- respect you. And after that, you perform so well, you know what I'm saying, when you're comfortable, when you're at home. So mm-hmm. I felt like that was a huge win, you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. It. Yeah. I, I like the way Mike took it and uh, looked at it in a different direction. I didn't even consider doing it that way. Yeah. I like that answer. I really but... enjoyed that. I, yeah. Really good, Mike. Because... You always doing. You always doing the left. <laughs> that's See? that's his left field. I love it. I love it. I love it. Spice it up. He's got right. a good point, though. We we traded, yeah, like the first and the fourth and whatever fifth and or whatever picks, but we got a superstar wide receiver that yeah. impacted the team immediately and is on a reasonable contract, a super underpaid, yep, market yes. value contract. Yes. Uh, he's definitely going to get a pay bump. We just don't know when, or at least yeah. he deserves it. <laughs> so mm-hmm. definitely a W. Good good, good answer, Mike. What about yeah, you, that's team? how I knew he was so hungry because oh, yeah. of what they gave him. I was like, oh, he's <laughs> he's going to go nuts. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah that's yeah. how it goes. Yeah. He wanted. He definitely wanted to show out. Yes. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What about you, team? I'm, I'm, I'm not going to go there, but my win was um, Thanksgiving's Day. Thanksgiving Day, um, Dallas. Yeah. When I took it right off my plate, I'm sorry. When I tell you, I was at my mom's house. Family was over. There's a Giants fan. There's a Steelers fan, a Patriots fan. And I'm just like, okay, I'm just waiting. Uh, Although we didn't start out well that game. Mm -hmm. We didn't start out too great. Mm -hmm. But the... Everybody was watching, so yes. I was just like, "We're going to perform." People are still thinking Josh is the same Josh mm-hmm. from year one. Mm-hmm. But when Josh <laughs> wanted that first down, it was over. It was oh, over. oh yeah. where he fumbled and he picked it up and like right. threw Byron Jones like <laughs> off him. <gasps> that was nuts. Ooh, Cole Beasley coming back home, showing. I was, only thing that would have made me feel so great is he would have jumped in that what. That pot. Of, oh, the Salvation that, um, Army pot. Yes. <laughs> oh, that would have been nuts. Oh, I would have been like, been it's done. That was a big it's win. It's done. Yes, that was, that was a big win. Yeah. Big yeah. And if we can go back to that scheme, Devin Singletary would have an awesome year. Yeah. Oh, he went bananas in that yes. running scheme. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. For sure. I but mean, that's mine. Yeah. yeah when yeah. when I think about that Thanksgiving game, I don't know what it is, but I felt so good about that going into it. I was like, mm-hmm. I don't know what it is, but the Bills are going to show out and they're going to win today. And yep. they did it in the best possible way. Like, do you, you guys remember after the game was over, the camera kind of panned to the Cowboys locker room and you could hear yes. them screaming <laughs> at each other. And yeah, I was like, best. That used to be us. Yeah. Yikes. Yikes. Yeah. Like, yes. <laughs> Seriously. Yes. It felt yeah. good to be on the other side. Oh, absolutely. You were going to say sure. something, Justin? Uh, I, I was just kind of saying, uh, T, T stole my answer on I'm this sorry. one. That's quite all right. I think that's, nah, everybody. I think that's everybody's but, answer. Yeah, but so like prepping for this show, I set out to watch the highlights of this game. And I got I got about three minutes in. And I was like, you know what? I, I got to watch this whole game again. So I, I pulled it up. I watched the whole game again, start to finish. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, 
we touched on Beasley went bananas, but there was a couple things I forgot about in that game. My guy Star Latulale had an interception. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Oliver had a great game. Oliver had Ed Oliver had a strip sack. Murphy recovered it. Yep. Then Trent Murphy got a strip sack of his own at the end. That uh, John Brown threw the touchdown pass to uh, oh, Devin yeah. Singletary. Yes, oh, that was yeah. crazy. It's, it's like the team just knew like this was. We'd always underperform under the lights on the national stage. Mm-hmm. And it was like the team went into this game and was like, we're just going to end this narrative tonight. They yeah, pulled out tonight. all the stops. Yeah. You got performances from guys that you don't – Trent Murphy was a bit of a non-factor that mm-hmm. season, but yeah. he came out and balled. You know, we're pulling these trick plays, John Brown slinging touchdowns. Mm-hmm. It, it was just – it was, it was just a- one of my favorite games ever. Yeah, you you seen that they were they decided before they got on the plane that we're not leaving this place without a W. Yeah, yeah, right. I loved it. I loved it. Correct me if you, I'm Andrew? wrong. Um, before I get to mine, correct me if I'm wrong. <clears throat> Didn't I forgot what player it was, or maybe it was a a coach that said, "Yeah, we started watching film on the Cowboys like three weeks before this game had happened. Yeah, like they were." I remember that. They were ready. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, yeah. cool. Yeah. They were not. A, they were not about it. And I'm. You could tell the Cowboys. And maybe, maybe I'm wrong here, but they were just kind of looking as the Bills as an easy W. Like, oh, we're, we're no, the Cowboys. Sure. Yes. We're, yeah. we're, they, they think about history. They think yeah. about yeah. the history of, uh, of Dallas and Buffalo, and yeah. they sat in that for so long, and mm-hmm. no more, no more. Definitely not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So. My most impactful win, there's so many, and I might be a little guilty of some recency bias, but I'm going to go ahead and pick the Patriots beatdown on Monday Night Football of this most recent season. And here are my reasons why. It showed the entire country, right, for the very similar reasons that of the Cowboys game, everyone's watching it, that we're on top of the East without question, without question. Belichick slamming his phone for, like, some <laughs> terrible challenge. It just felt so good. Yeah, it felt so yeah. good to do that to the Patriots after years of what felt like conditioning to expect two L's whenever you saw the schedule get dropped. You're like, yes. you didn't even need to get the schedule to know that. We're no. like, all right, the Patriots, we're probably going to lose these two games. We won that game 38-9, to and we threw in Barkley at then. Yeah. Like, and we, I forgot how much we won, like the the gap. I forgot. It was huge because I Ooh. I went back and seen as well, and I was just like, "Wow!" Yeah, okay. it was huge. It Diggs, was huge. Okay. three touchdowns. Yep. Yeah, three on his own. Yeah. It was. He knew how important that game was to Buffalo. He knew. Oh my God! Yeah, that they was. All, yeah, yeah, that was amazing. Hands down, that was one of my hand. most favorite games I've ever watched in my entire life. Yeah, for sure. I agree with you. All right. Yeah. All right, well, before we dive into the most impactful losses, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Welcome back in, everyone. Let's pick up things where we left off and talk about the most influential L's that we have endured as Bills fans. I guess I'll start this one off since I finished last last time. For me, so... Mike and T, I don't know if you know, knew this about me or not, but I lived in New York City from like 2016 to 2018 because I was there for graduate school. And I went to the Thursday night Jets game in week nine of 2017. Now, that might be a little hard, you know, if, to remember just in general, but maybe this will help clear it up. The Jets were literally dancing uh, like on defense when the bills were huddled up it was when i forgot what oh rex ryan was our head coach uh oh, zay God. jones did that weak lightsaber touchdown with on uh oh. yeah it, it wasn't a good game and no. this might be the only game where i was legit angry at the outcome <laughs> like you know not even the Hail Murray made me feel this way. Like, the Hail Murray was just kind of like, I can't believe that happened, but it is what it is. And I was, you know, I just made some food and just moved on with my life. 
I was just so <laughs> mad. I was contemplating my fandomonian at that point, as like at that Jets game, and maybe it was because <laughs> there was a bunch of screaming Jets fans in my face, and it was just like mm-hmm. I was like, oh my yeah. god, I got, and I got to ride this train back with all of them, like. Oh, just God. Bills geared out. Yeah, Did definitely. You, have your, you had your you had your beer, Bills gear on. Huh? Oh yeah, oh. I had my throwback starter jacket, like the Marv Levy things, and oh, okay. yeah, uh-huh. easily the angriest I've ever been as a Bills fan during the drought. <laughs> For but, sure. But the most, I like I like losses more than wins. As weird of that as weird as that sounds, because I'm with you. You can learn so much yep. more from that. And what I learned is that I can't control what 11 men wearing tights are doing on a field 300 feet from me or two feet from my TV screen, right? Like, That's right. <laughs> you, yeah, I can be upset with what happened, but at the end of the day, like, I didn't contribute anything. It's not like I did nothing. And that's why I'm here, and they're on the field. <laughs> yeah, but true. at the end of the day, I left that game before it ended in the fourth because it was super over and i just went back home to my little shack in brooklyn and i had and i was just just thinking to myself like dang that really hurt that like really <laughs> yeah. really hurt <laughs> to watch mm-hmm. um yeah. justin what what about you what what's your most impactful loss um so i had i had a couple different directions i was going with this i mean the easy answer is music city miracle but ow Nobody wants to talk about that, so I just watched that let's just, game too. Yeah, let's just say that me personally, the biggest impact it had on on me personally would be that game, but I don't even want to talk about that. Um, as far as like uh, like a franchise changing loss, um, recency bias involved there, but I really think the Hell Murray was was just kind of like the ignition switch last year that was like that little bit of adversity that kind of showed the team like oh we're we're not untouchable like we got to play the full 60 minutes whistle to whistle um but you know again that's recency bias the one that was really sticking out to me um it was the it was 2004 game uh against the Steelers y'all probably remember this one Stevie Johnson drop um we were we were just in that graphic for like the last six weeks of the in the hunt graphic and you know oh four i'm i'm 14 you know i'm i'm into like my actual cognizant football memories and you know it's it's been nothing but losing and we had this year where you know we're right on the doorstep of the playoffs steelers got nothing to play for they're playing their backups and it's just like we started that season 0 and 4. We rattled off 7 and 2 with like this one game on the line. All the eggs in the basket of that game. We still needed some help, but it was like just go win that game. And and that we lost that game to their backups and it was just like for for me that was like, you know, the the real ding on my fandom as a young man, you know. Um, it, it was hard for me to bounce back from that one, uh, but to your point with the, you know how much you can learn from losses and all that, I think like you know the Hell Murray Music City Miracle are a little bit more <coughs> impactful to the organization as a whole. But that old four Steelers one really really stung me for a long time. Oof. Right. Yeah, yeah. I'm oh. just I'm just thinking about when. You see that pass go right to Stevie Johnson, and he drops it, and he just he's sitting there in the end mm. zone, like kind of like a child that got like their favorite toy ripped away away from. And he age. was sitting on the on the oh, ground just for like so long. Uh, I mean, I don't I don't, I don't blame this. him. If he, I don't want to talk about it anymore. He <laughs> Sorry. Even, yeah, he had no legs at that point. But you know what? That's like Diggs leaving <clears throat> or not leaving the Kansas City game. Yeah, and mm-hmm. just watching them celebrate. Yeah, same thing. Yeah. It's pain. You know what I mean? Same thing. Oh, yeah. brutal pain. Yeah. yeah. Stevie Johnson still a Buffalo Bills great though. Yeah, no, for sure. For, sure. for sure. Yeah, for sure. For sure. The so. Daryl Revis eraser. <laughs> <laughs> right. True, true. Dude can cover everybody in the league except but, for Stevie Johnson. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Let's go. That's yeah. I love. I used to love those matchups though. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. 
So yeah. I guess I'll go next. Um, I got two, but the one that stood out for me was the wild card game against Houston. Of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I had that Ooh. one and I had um, the Browns game too, but Last this, the, um, the Houston game, because I guess we shouldn't, yeah, we, yes. That roller coaster. Yeah, that and, that's, and that's what it was. It was a yeah. roller coaster game. We were up 16 to 0, or 13 to 0 halftime, right? I think 16. Yeah, I think it was 16. It was 16? Yeah. And yeah. then all of things just went away because you said that Jerry Hughes didn't return the touchdown. You said the man wasn't um, the ball. What was it? The, the oh, live the touch ball, back, but touch back right, thing. yeah, it was a lot going on. Duke uh, Williams had an awesome game. Yeah, he did. Yeah, Singleton. Then you had then you had the crack back block, the block in the black. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Cody Ford. That was terrible. But then you called three years later. You called it and said it wasn't. Can he get his money back now? Like I don't even know. Yeah, so like, he needs a refund. That yeah. that emote that game was so emotional because it was like we we were better than them. Yeah. But we didn't play better than them. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Well said. So, and, and I guess it was just one of those things as, okay, we're not ready yet. And that's how I took it. Yeah, it but like, yeah. I'm telling you, that whole week, the next weekend, I, like I told Mike, I couldn't watch I couldn't watch football. It was yeah. tough. I didn't watch. It was, it was tough. Yeah. It was tough. That game was tough because it was like, we got this. It's locked yes. up. And then it was like, we don't got this anymore. <laughs> And I was like, hold on, we got this again. Yeah. No, nope, we don't got it. Uh, yeah. And it's like, I got to go one way or the other here because I'm freaking yeah, out. Because Real everybody perfect. played well, though. Even yeah. though it was 16-0, mm -hmm. to zero, everybody was playing everything. Like, Singletary had a – he was a great running back. Josh was doing what he needed to do. Our defense was – our defense that year, mm. our yeah. defense was incredible. Yeah. Oh yeah. I need our defense to be that now. <laughs> right. Our and defense was good. I remember watching this game and this this guy who I never typically watch football with. We were all watching. He was like, "Oh, the Bills got this. Let's let's turn on the other game." And I like turn back to him and I was like, "Please don't say that." Thank and this you. this was like right as the second quarter is winding down. Mm. And then of course the game starts turning. You could feel it in your stomach right and it. I, it like i think it first started as soon as um what what was that pass to john brown and he got his feet out of bounds yeah and, oh. right in the red zone and i was like this isn't good this yeah. uh, this isn't yep. good then those yep. what was that saran neal and uh oh, Matt yes, Milano I forgot about that one basically yes. neutralize each other's force <laughs> and deshaun watson just finds What's he got name? out of it. Oh, what? what who? Do, he's on our team right now. I was don't it? Know it was it a um uh, uh, the running back or was it? Yeah, yeah, our special teams uh, ace. Oh my god, I'm drawing a blank. Justin. I don't even know. I know it was running back, but I don't even know his name. Taiwan. Yeah, Taiwan Jones. He gives it to Taiwan Jones, who yeah, runs it down to right. like the that's three right. yard line yeah. or something like that, and then got you guys. Kyrie <laughs> Fairbair just knocks a chip shot in and. I remember seeing Josh's face of just like, <laughs> like uh, right. exhaustion, and I was all I could think to myself was, "It's the same Stevie Johnson thing that I thought." Yeah. Me too, dude. Literally. Listen, me too. because Jerry Hughes had three sacks. Trent Trent Murphy had a sack. Like our defense was on point. This game was something that we should have won. Yeah. Oh yeah. We should have won that game. Yeah. It just. Yeah. I agree with what you said of. Uh, Letting that one slip away just kind of that that showed we weren't ready to take that yeah. next yeah. step, yeah. and that was kind of like you know you still see a little bit of that in Josh Allen with the uh, dropping back twenty yards trying oh. to make something happen and mm -hmm. taking the twenty five yard sack, but like that game was like there there was at one point it was like Bro. three consecutive mm -hmm. plays of that, and it was like. And then there was like a fumble in yep. there. It was like, geez. Yeah. They call him the sugar but high Josh Allen. When sugar he does high stuff. Josh. Yeah. yeah. I think he's yeah. eating a few less pixie sticks these days. Oh, no, yeah, yes, for sure. Sugar yeah. free. That's what they call him now. 
Yeah, yeah sugar free okay. Allen. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. T, you were going to mention the Cleveland game. I'm interested to hear your thoughts about that one. So that Cleveland game, I watched it today. Mm. Another game that, you know what? I'm so happy they got rid of Hoskins, our kicker. Mm-hmm. Because he missed he missed like two field goals in that game, yeah, important field goals in that game. Yeah, and then also another Jerry Hughes play because they called it a four was it a forward pass? Mm-hmm. And oh then, yeah, 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 yeah. Bless you. He ran it back. Thank you. Bless you. He ran it back and got a touchdown. They called it back. That was crazy. Yeah, I was I like, listen, that. but not even that. <clears throat> Our defense, so. Are we the thing about this team and that team then is that we can't stop the run. It's hard for mm. us to stop the run. They were running left and right on yeah. us. I know but where Josh, you're going. Yeah, but Josh Allen, like Beasley, played a great, another good game. Mm. Yeah, you know, another good game. But I mean, I don't know, Andrew. You can pick up. Right. So. That was a, Andrew. Is that is that your Cleveland game? Yeah, that's the one I went to. <laughs> oh, did you I, go to that game? I was oh, there live oh, oh, person. You and, have gone to some games, Andrew. <laughs> yeah, that my track record isn't too hot. I'm not gonna front. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I just that game was brutal from start to finish. I get there, the tailgating. I, you know, I'm just there with me and some friends and you know we're just trying to like tailgate with like some people and you know i'm thinking to myself like all right browns fans like what do they have to be proud of about that we're proud about nothing we have a lot in common right like let's mm-hmm. just let's just chill and have fun and i had a lot of people who were just kind of straight up rude to me just because i was wearing a bills jersey and i was like you know we're on the other side of the lake right like it's right. <laughs> it's nothing like that and then the game starts, and, you know, it, this guy behind me screaming in my ear, Josh Allen sucks, Josh Allen sucks. Then he runs in for the touchdown, I just look back, and I was like, Josh Allen rocks, like, you know? And then, <laughs> and to your point about the run defense, I was super uh, skeptical um, of that, of how we would perform, and then we kept them out of the end zone. Four times. That was yeah. crazy. Four times times yeah that was insane yeah yeah it was really just stuff chubb three times trey right blocks uh obj it was yeah might have yep. been more than four honestly if mm-hmm. i if i can i think it was correctly. like uh five or something yeah. like that i remember yeah it was a lot yeah, okay yeah yeah it was crazy and yeah anyways i i just remember coming in and out of my section because i had to use the bathroom get food you know get, just trying to hold myself afloat <laughs> that I was a little <laughs> lost, lost in the sauce a little bit. And mm-hmm. this guy like looked at me specifically and said, don't come back here. And I was, I was first of all, I'm on the visiting side. That's all I'm thinking about. Two, you're not going to deny me my seat. <laughs> like, and I, you said you're not to come back to your seat. Ba- basically. And I literally walked right by him <laughs> just to like get back uh, to my seat. Yeah. I was just, and at wow. the end, like I don't know, like I was getting some middle fingers, uh, you know. The it it, w- it just wasn't. I didn't Did have, well. I did not have a good experience. And I remember walking out of there with my head super low, and this lone Bills fan that was on the corner with his other buddy was just like clapping. He's like, "Don't worry, man, it's gonna be okay. Like, pick your head up, pick your head up." And I was like, mm-hmm. "Yeah, he's right." And then I went to some restaurant and got some food with my friends, and it was all good. <laughs> That's what's up. Yeah. yeah. Because I, again, we were still in that game. We were. I don't know, man. Do we have? Do we have? Who was our wide receivers in that game? I can't remember. I know it was Beasley. Was it Zay Jones? I think we had traded him at that point last year. Uh, I can't he remember. Was gone at that point. Okay. All right, yeah, I know we had Beasley Brown pre It was Brown. Yes, it was pre digs. Uh oh, you know Post Benjamin. Oh yeah. God. Yeah, Benjamin, Benjamin was there. No, no, oh, he he wasn't. Was he there? I don't believe so. I think he Oh, was it Roberts? Yeah. I think and, it was Roberts, um, right? 
Robert Foster. I think he was there. there for a little bit. Yeah, yeah we so did. Yeah, yeah, it was definitely a rough go. You had no idea who was I'm, the guy. I'm thinking of like what names I can rattle off here, and I'm like Deontay Thompson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's Jeez. funny. Yikes. Yeah, All right. we sure. didn't have great wide receivers back when he, no. when Josh no. came. Benjamin. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It's, I think it's time for Mike to take us to left field real quick. Yeah. Well, well, listen, I have a funny loss. Um, okay. I had a loss. It was last year when we played the Eagles at home. That was that was a harsh <laughs> game to watch. I was there. But Oof, listen to me terrible. when I tell you I had the greatest time. I don't know. I don't know why. You know what? Because um, that day it was super windy crazy windy like yeah. unbelievably windy and you know um they usually have the urinals like uh lined up like oh god and we had a blast watching these people go in these urinals and then the doors like fly Smack. super open while they're on the toilet <laughs> oh it was the greatest it was the great and then when we were inside uh of course if you guys remember the game sanders ran all over us mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. we couldn't stop a run to save our lives it was disgusting. And it was super windy, so none of the passes were landing. Everything was off. So, And then our run game wasn't working because the Eagles was just stuffing us. We were always trying to run through the middle, so it just didn't work out. And the guy who was in front of us, so we were in the 300s, by the way. The guy who was sitting in front of us was completely wasted, Eagles fan. Needless to say, fourth quarter, he clears about three rows in front of him. By just puking everywhere. Oh. oh. It was, but, so. Good thing you were sitting behind him. Yeah, of course, of course. I, I was, I was, you know, I was good. I was in the row right behind him. So, so we won initially, you know, we, we won on that one. As long as he, you know, had a rough time. His his brother was having the greatest time, though. Not the oh, greatest my. brother, you know, letting, mm-hmm. you know, but, you know, it was a great time. Bad loss. Super windy day, so that that's the loss that you know most recently sticks out to me. Uh, all the losses that you guys covered were the ones that I would have said also. That Arizona Hail Mary, that hurt, that hurt. But the, after that, it set the tone. You know, it set the tone where it was like, like you said, we we have to play the full full game, start to finish. Mm-hmm. We can't play around. We can't let it slide. We can't go off go off grid. So that was. That was a tough one for me too. Yeah, that that Arizona game for me too was kind of like <laughs> when it when it happened, I was just kind of like in awe for a second. Like it didn't register, yes. and then, not at all. And then I was like, I was trying to like figure out if I was like pissed off, and then I was like, you know, this is part of football. This is this is part of like what makes the game so great to me is like. <laughs> that could have been my team. It could have been your team, whatever. But, like, yeah. we had three of our best defenders draped around just arguably the best receiver in the league, one of the best receivers in the league. And yeah. he just went up and made th- – that play's going to be on Sports Center for the next 20 years, and I'm going to have to keep yeah. watching it. But, like, yep. that's how ridiculous of a play it was. And then kind of using that as motivation to finish out the rest of the season was, like, kind of a caveat with it. But, like, losing on a play like that, like, it was tough. And they play – they have a commercial with that play in it, and it plays all the time. I don't know if you guys see that. It's it's horrendous. It's on there with the OBJ. Yes, yes. And I'm like, why is that on there? But Hopkins just showed – why well, he's top? He's been, you know, top three for a couple of years. So, you know, all the time though. And I say that every win. This, this is this is something that can help everybody too. Every time we lose, if we lose or whatever, I always say any given Sunday because we never mm-hmm. really lose by a lot. So, it's it's any given Sunday. I, it's things like that happen. You know, that's that's why the game is the game. Yeah. 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 You always keep me grounded because I'm always like, yo, welcome. Yes. Yeah. Like any given Sunday, I'm like fuck any given yes, Sunday. But we can win because I, you know, you go right. in worried, and she texts me. She's I like, do. "Are you ready?" And I text her back the Ultimate Warrior uh, 
gif where he's like shaking on the ropes. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. let's go. <laughs> yeah. he does every time. I'm just like, okay, I'm ready. <laughs> yes. I'm like, no, no, turn that up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that Hale Murray play, man. I, I so I was watching it in Long Island and they don't they weren't broadcasting that game, so I had to do it through some other methods, if you know, if you're catching what I'm saying here, <laughs> and, <laughs> and we all I was with the friend who was, yeah, <laughs> I was with a friend who was on the phone with their mom, because I, I thought we were already losing the game, so I turned it off, and I was like, nah, I gotta turn this back on, and she's on the phone with her mom, and she's like, oh, oh, oh my god, the, the Bills are winning, and I was like, yes, so I, that I caught it, caught it, because the website was behind a little bit, so I'm watching this, I'm like, feeling good, but during that entire game, and even before it started, I had said to her, I was like, I don't have a good feeling about this game, I don't know what it is, but I just don't feel, I'm super nervous, apprehensive about it, and lo and behold, I just see Murr raw at the pocket, and just throw this rainbow of a shot, yeah, and yeah. when oh. I seen him go up for it, I was like, I was like, oh God, I don't know if like they. It kind of reminded me of what how I felt about that was exactly about the Saran Neal and the Matt Milano, yeah, literally oh, yeah. neutralizing yeah. each other. Yep, I felt like if it, they just got neutralized, <laughs> like you know, it was <laughs> they just pinned them up there perfectly, so. It, it was it was good. Like Trey was trying to box him out, but he couldn't box him out because mm-hmm. High was behind him, and then yep. Poirier was trying to like push him over, but it just it just wasn't good enough. And yeah. it it was a it was a special play, and you yeah. know we got to give them credit, right? Yep. They they created a special play. Yeah. I love Hopkins, even though he said some disrespectful things about oh the players God, afterwards. Yes. How are you going to make a chain out of that? I was just like, yeah. I don't know. Like, I, I, not I'm not cool that with that. Murray trying to, trying to, what was he trying to do? Um, trademark that whole um, Hail Murray and stuff. It's like, oh, I was like, God, you, guys so, you guys are so corny. And then you make the playoffs, so it's whatever. But I'm happy that we lost that game. Oh, yeah. I can say that now. Yeah, I wasn't right happy. now, yeah. Yeah, I wasn't happy when we <laughs> no. lost the game. I was no. sitting in my recliner, just like, my wife was like, are you okay? I'm like, I don't even know how to feel. I didn't that even know how to feel. That's sick, where I was. Time. I was just like motionless for like yeah. a solid five, ten minutes. Like, Yes. Yeah. I, I, like, yes, that's how it was. I was like, Wait a I, minute. What? That's I remember one of those Jerry Rice oh, plays, man. like from back in the day. Like yeah. you can't duplicate stuff like that. Like you that was can't. sick. I was like, oh, and it had to happen to us. I was like, here, here, thank you know, here we go. Like, of course. And now they're gonna replay this for years to come. Listen, we're gonna bring yeah. home the Super Bowl, and all of a sudden, seeing that commercial ain't gonna hurt us so much. Right. No, not at all. It, it doesn't even really hurt now, but I'm just like, come on, you take that out of there. Like, Still stings yeah. a little Hoffman's bit. got better plays. He's got better plays. Yeah. yeah. I just remember watching that, and I just, I was motionless and quiet, and then I shut the laptop, got up, and my friend was like, are, are you okay? And I was like, let's just get something to eat. Like, <laughs> like yeah. it's, it's over not, at this point. Let's not talk about it. Right. Yeah, let's not talk about it. Yeah. Right, right. Well, I think that's going to wrap it up for our most impactful and wins uh, episode. Again, thank you guys for coming on. For so sure. We're blast. Where can the people find you on social media, like your accounts, Facebook? What, what do you guys got going on? Go ahead, Mike. Uh, well, you, uh, I, I mentioned earlier that I'm a barber. Uh, my, my barber shop is Shop 143. We recently located on 2511 Harlem Road in Chittawaga. So if you ever guys ever in the area... Check us out. Um, follow us on show, social media, shop one four three seven one six. Um, and uh, T will tell you about the podcast, social media, where you can find us on YouTube. Yeah, we're on Instagram, Twitter at um, Not Your Average Podcast. Uh, also, find us on Spotify, um, Google Map, all on uh, Google Map. Jesus, Google, Google Map. Podcast. <laughs> we're gonna <laughs> find. See, you. Mike. See, see. That's why I love tea. Give it to him, tea. Yes. <laughs> but yes, uh, find us on Not Your Average Podcast. 
and you type that in, you'll find us for sure. T, Thank remember you. all the listens, all the listens. All the C's. <laughs> That's where we be. All the listens and all the C's. That's Mike's thing. But right, we appreciate right. you guys, and we um, thank you yes. for us having thank us you. on. This yeah, was fun. We'll, yeah, we're yes. definitely going to have to do a future episode down the pipeline. So yes. thanks for coming on. Yeah, and for sure. I think that's going to wrap it up for this week's episode. But next week, we're going to do our Buffalo Bills trivia episode. So go ahead, subscribe, like, comment, review our podcast and the Not Your Average um, Buffalo, Not Your Average podcast in the 716. Go check out Big Mike's shop, the 143 shop on Harlem. Uh, we're always looking for guests on our show, so reach out to us on our social media platforms if you're interested by searching The Wandering Buffalo Podcast. Justin, where can the people find you? Always find me, uh, social medias, at jgods22. And also hit us up uh, just right through any of the podcast page at The Wandering Buffalo. Right, right. And you can find me on social media accounts by searching 2 Changs. It's been real, everyone. And uh, all I got to say is uh, go Bills. Go Bills. Go Bills. Bills. Peace. Awesome.